I have, I've heard it said many times, and I'm sure you have, there's a couple of things in life that are inevitable. One of them is death. It's appointed. And it's one we'll all keep. The other is what? Taxes. <laughs> I want to throw another one in. And that's problems. Problems are just as, as inevitable as death and taxes. You're either coming out of a big problem or you're out in the middle of one or there's one out there. You know why I know that? Because that's the way it's been with me. All of my life. And having said that, I, I acknowledge the fact that when I look around and see what so many people have gone through, I feel just so blessed. That doesn't mean that I am immune from problems. I have them. So having laid the groundwork and acknowledged the fact that we're all going to have problems, I want to begin by making this statement. The problems we face in life will do one of two things. They'll either defeat us or they'll develop us. And it all comes down to how we respond to them. It really comes down to us. I want us to think on this thought this morning. As odd as this may sound, that God wants to use problems that we go through to actually help us. I think that's an amazing thought. Now, understand me clearly. I, I don't want you... I don't want you to think that God's sitting up there in heaven and, and He's just meeting out problems. There's old Birchfield. He's not had one in a while. Let's lay one on him. No! That isn't the nature of our God. He is a loving God who wants the best for us. When you have a problem, it doesn't come because God says, well, that and hadn't had one in a while. No. God is not the author of confusion. And, and problems can bring confusion. Confusion. But God permits. He allows problems to happen. Because if He didn't, we would never have one. He said that would be wonderful. By the time we finish this morning, I hope that we will all regard problems from a little different perspective. 
the fact that God can actually help us when we're going through problems that life throws our way. There's five things I want us to see. Five ways that God wants to use problems in your life. Number one, God uses problems to direct us. You say, well, Ronnie, why couldn't he send me a memo? (laughs) Shoot me an email. Let's face it. There are times that we get stagnant. We get ho-hum. We fall in that old cycle of routine. We all do it. There's times that we need a little fire built under us. And I think that sometimes problems will do that and God will use that to actually bring direction in our life. You know, I look back at my own life at times when there was a very critical intersection. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. It's right or left. You've got to go one way. You've waited on approaching this intersection a long time and it's here. You can't stop. You've got to go right, you've got to go left. And there's times in my life when I knew which way I should go because of some problem I went through. We need the direction of God. He is the ultimate source of right direction. God will never steer you wrong. He will never send you in the wrong direction. He always wants what's best for you. When you nail down the fact that this is something God wants for me, my friend, you can rest in that. You can take great solace, great comfort in the fact this is of God. So the next time you're going through a problem and right on the heels of that problem, you see out there a decision-making time. I want you to reach out to God and say, Dear Lord, I've got to make a choice and I want your input. Help me to know what to do. And it it may be a financial situation. It may be a domestic situation. It could be a health problem. It could be so many different things. It could be a career move. Reach out. And say, Lord, direct me. He wants to do that. Second, not only does God use problems to direct us, He uses problems to inspect us. To inspect us. There are times that we we need a good diagnostic check. You take your vehicle today, the newer vehicles, and you have a check engine light that comes on. I find out how to fix mine. I take a little piece of electrical tape and just put it over. I don't see it. When it begins to make noises and I hear them, I just turn the radio up. Works. Works for a while. (laughs) And then it quits. No, you take your vehicle and they will do, they'll plug it into a computer. 
which will download the information that's on your automobile's computer. And there'll be a code and it'll tell them what's wrong with your vehicle. About nine times out of ten, it's going to be some kind of sensor. There are times that we need a tune-up. Your neighbor may be walking around right now and their check engine lights on. They don't even know it. They need a checkup. And sometimes the only way that's going to happen is because some problem comes into our life. And the bells are going off and the whistles and the lights are flashing. Someone said, and I thought this was humorous, people are like tea bags. If you want to know what's inside them, just drop them in hot water. That's pretty true. Folks, there was, there's very few things we go through in life that will reveal more about us than when we go through problems. We'll learn a whole lot about ourselves. We'll learn about someone else as we go through problems. God uses problems to give us direction. He uses problems for our inspection. Thirdly, God uses problems to correct us. To direct us, inspect us, and to correct us. You know there are times that the only way you can really learn a lesson is to have a problem. I was talking to Danny a moment ago and you remember Danny in your prayer, he... He's hurt his back. It's really bothering him. And uh, I guess because I've been there, done that, I can relate to that a great deal. Remember Danny in your prayers. He's uh, sitting there right now, and I'm sure in a lot of pain. And the problem that he has is essentially the same one that I have, bad disc. And uh, when he overextends himself as his wife reminds him of a lot. When he does that, those discs get over against that dreaded sciatic nerve. And it's awful. It's horrible. And the pain in the bottom of the back you can deal with, but that pain going down the legs. Awful. It's terrible. And we were talking about this a moment ago. In fact, I had heard people talk about their sciatic nerve all of my life. And it wasn't that I didn't, you know, care about what they were going through. I just couldn't relate to it. But there came a time in my life when I could. And now when someone talks about sciatica or a sciatic nerve problem, I know. I know what they're talking about. There are times in our life when the only way that we can learn lessons and in the case of someone with back problems, it's a lesson that some of us haven't learned too well. Is watch what you lift, how you lift, those sorts of things. And those lessons can only be learned through pain. There's probably not any of us at some time or another hadn't seen this happen you have a heater or a stove or something that 
radiates heat outside of a heat pump or something that comes out of a vent. Maybe a stove or something like that. Or maybe a range cooktop. And you got small children. And you grill that into them. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You tell one, two years old, don't do that. I promise you that's going to be the very thing they want to do. The very thing. You know how most of them find out that Mamma had their best intentions in heart. They touch it. And when they touch it, in that young mind is a realization. Well, Mamma was right about that. She was right on target there because it hurt. The psalmist. And I think one of the greatest psalms in the Word of God, Psalm 119, 71, he said, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes, God's law. I thought, what an attitude. Rather than complain to God and gripe at God and bemoan to God because of something He permits and allows in our life that develops into a painful problem, we just say, thank you, Lord. This is for my benefit. This is going to help me in the long run. Remember, we're talking about ways God uses problems. To direct us, inspect us, correct us, and to protect us. Have you ever considered the fact that a problem can actually be beneficial? If it helps us or keeps us or warns us of some impending danger... I once read a story. There was a gentleman who worked for a company and and he had a a very, very elevated position. He was very high up in management. And because of his position, he became aware of the fact that there were some things going on in the higher-ups. It should not be going on. There were some unscrupulous things happening. The financial records were being dealt with. There there were things going on, lies were being told. There were things going on that could be potentially... Detrimental even to the point of someone going to prison. This particular gentleman was a very, very devout Christian. And when he knew of assurance these things were going on, he confronted his bosses. And they basically brushed him off. You just do your job. We will take care of the other things. That man went home. He talked to his wife. He prayed about the matter. And he said, I felt total peace in my heart that I need to get out of there. He said, I could not be the Christian that I should be and knowingly be a part of what was going on. He went the very next day, turned in his resignation, retired from a very, very lucrative position, making a lot of money. But knowing in his heart, he was doing what God wanted him to do. 
God, true to His Word, opened a door for that man. And he got a job with a wonderful company. And it was far better making more money. A few months went by and he heard the news. That company had been infiltrated. People had gone in and looked at records. And some of those who were responsible ended up serving prison time. You see, folks, when we stay true to God, and make no doubt about it, that had the potential to be a big problem for him. He had to to leave a very well-paying job, a place where he had security, a place where he had uh, vacation build up, sick days, everything else. He had to say goodbye to that. That has the potential for being a real problem for him. But God used that problem to protect him. And there's times, there's not a doubt in my mind that God does that for us. Sometimes we may be even unaware of it, but He does. He does. Most of you are very familiar with the life of Joseph. I think Joseph is one of the most amazing men in the entire Old Testament. No wonder he's spoken of so many times as being a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph's brothers hated him. Hated him so much that they sold him into slavery, lied to their father, told their father that he was killed. He was taken to Egypt and he was... And before he ever gets there, there was times he was in prison. There was all this stuff. And through every bit of it, God was with him. Every bit of it. And the hand of God was upon Joseph so much that God elevated him to the very right hand of the Pharaoh. That's just unbelievable when you think about it. It would be unbelievable without God's intervention. There was a time when drought and poverty hit the land and everyone suffered, including the Israelites. And Joseph's brothers went to the place where he occupied Because Joseph had been wise enough to listen to God and told the Pharaoh, we need, while there is time, we need to store up. There is a storm coming. And Pharaoh listened and heeded the man of God. And there were all sorts of resources stored up to sustain not only the people of Egypt, but the outlying areas as well. And picture this scene. The brothers of Joseph are forced to go where he is seated. Time has changed him. They don't recognize him. He knows who they are. They go in, they plead their case. And this is one of those moments you'd like to have been in the room. You'd just like to have seen what happened. Finally, he reveals himself to them. I am Joseph. They talked about their, their, their dad and it broke his heart. He couldn't stand it anymore. He said, I'm your brother. I'm your brother. 
Can you imagine how those guys felt? Uh-oh, this is not going to be good. Do you know what Joseph said? Genesis 50, verse 20. He said, as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. That's why I am so big on Joseph. He could have told the Pharaoh, these men, they deserve death. I think they would have been killed. No. He said, you meant it for evil, but God intended it for good. There's one other. God uses problems to direct us, inspect us, correct us, protect us, and perfect us. The word now means to complete us. You know, when we respond to problems in the right way, you know, it will develop our character. You know, it will strengthen our integrity. You see, folks, God is more interested in our character than He is our comfort. And I really think through all of the problems and difficulties that we have to go through life, God is developing us and making us into a better individual And guess what? We're going to take that right into eternity. We're going to die better people having trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to die better people than we were before we did. And then the real, the real payday is that we leave this life And we're ushered right into eternity to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. To perfect us. To make us complete. You see, if we never did have a problem, if there was never an issue, never a problem in our life, you know what we would do? We would just live life Like the young foolish man who said, was so rich. I have so many goods. I've got all this, that, and the other. And I'm just going to live life. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. If we never had problems, that's what we'd do. But when problems come along, we begin to examine ourselves in light of the Word of God. And God makes that a character builder. He gives us greater integrity. And that would never happen without problems. So as you bow your head with me, The single most important thing this morning is that we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. My prayer this morning is that there has been a time in your life when you reached out by simple faith and put your trust in Jesus. I hope you have done that. But just in case you haven't, I want to give you an opportunity to do something. And it, it's very, very simple. And you can do this without any fear of being embarrassed. I would never do that. All you have to do is just by a raised hand say, Pastor Ronnie, would you remember me when you pray? I don't think I've ever been saved. I don't ever remember a time that I ask Jesus to forgive my sins and come into my life. I don't ever remember that. 
I don't know what I need to do. Right now, I'm just going to raise my hand. Would you remember me in prayer? Is there one anywhere? Anywhere? Just raise it up. Take it back down. I pray that that indicates that everybody is saved this morning. I'm not going to extend an invitation this morning per se. The invitation is always there. But I, just, I kind of want you just to take this home and think about it. I am going to ask you to do one thing so I can remember you when I pray. You say, Ronnie, God has spoken to my heart this morning and I'm like most people, I have always viewed problems in such a negative way. But God has spoken to me this morning and I believe that I might view my problems just a little bit different now. Would you remember me in prayer as God helps me with this? Is there one anywhere? God bless you. God bless you. Oh, a lot of those all over the house. And I, and, and I, I raise mine. Because I'm a work in progress also. When I realize that the problems I go through in life can actually make me a better person, it changes the whole perspective. It really does. If you'd like to talk with me at the end of the service, I'll be back at the back. Love to speak with you. Help you in any way that we can. Let's stand. Go ahead and keep your head.